Okay, thank you. Um, regarding this, um, your negotiations, you, you mentioned early on that this kind of started with the issue of a shipyard and that they needed the property where our current power plant is built and that's, therefore uh, there was a need to relocate or, or, or build a new power plant uh, to take over our power plant because that property would be needed uh, for the shipyard. Well, my question is, uh, <clears throat> uh, um, with that understanding, <clears throat> we have moved on to the next step, which is to build a brand new power plant. And I think the justification, as I have said, was we need that property for the shipyard. So during the negotiations, <clears throat> Um, just want to find out one is is the power plant tied to the shipyard sorry during the negotiations that started in July and uh, were concluded um, on August 3rd they we started out, um, we wanted that link, we wanted a, a hard link to the shipyard, and they wouldn't do it. But after, there was actually a point where we almost walked, just walked away, because they weren't, they weren't agreeing to a hard link to a shipyard, and they weren't also agreeing to a, um, a guarantee of a 10% cost reduction. So we were getting ready to walk away. They did come back, and I would characterize it as like a soft link to a investing in the CNMI. They they said that um, if they we would enter into this agreement, they would the Legion Capital was. Um, I believe you characterize as a promise that they would invest up to two hundred million dollars was the number they were using to wouldn't be like a Navy US Navy repair shipyard because that required a change in Congress a law by Congress but they were um, using the term like repair facility and cargo storage where they could ma maintain ships the prepo ships out there and they were willing to do that without, um, might not have been a ship repair facility, but it would have been a, a ship facility of the sort I just described. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, so, so we understand, and I asked you this question, that the ship, the plant is not tied to the shipyard legally, in, in the contract, nothing. Second, my second question that I think you already answered was, is it contingent on it? I think the answer, based on what you've said, is no. My third question is, are there any guarantees that a shipyard would be built? Just say yes or no. Uh, there's no congressional, I'm sorry, there's no contractual guarantee. And so there's no, it's not tied together, it's not contingent on it, there's no guarantees that a shipyard would be built. Mind you, again, this whole decision to build a plant is because of this need for a shipyard. But if there are no guarantees, then why are we even building the plant? Let me ask you a last question regarding that. If they don't build a shipyard, is there any penalty for not building a shipyard? Uh, there is no contractual penalty. So for all we know, this could be a, I mean, if there are no guarantees, nothing in the contract, <clears throat> why should we even remove our power plant then? There's no basis. There doesn't appear to be any valid basis for removing, for the use of that property. And secondly, for entering into a, an agreement for another contract, uh, for another power plant. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm not trying to find out since you were kind of party to the negotiations. You may have heard things that I, we don't know about here, but 
<clears throat> I do hear that you at least were trying to um, get some kind of assurance from it and that it almost, this negotiation almost fell apart uh, because there was none. Is that a fair statement? I believe that would be fair. Thank you, sir. Um, huh. Any members before we dismiss? Mr. Um, Burnbrick, <clears throat> I, I don't think we're finished here. I think you will be dismissed. I think I would to ask if the Attorney General's office can provide this body with the basis for signing off for that uh, on that agreement the specifically the capacity the legal capacity to sign this and we will probably uh, get back it will, once you provide this body with a, uh, with that information we may ask you to return because that is a significant matter here a very significant matter and the person that really can answer this is not here so we need some kind of uh, response legal I mean of uh, mm, official response from the Attorney General's office and if there are no other there's uh, one more representative Sablon Mr. Chairman Mr. Burnbridge let's go back to, to the emergency declaration uh, earlier you stated that the cause of the the emergency declaration that the, the governor was within his authority uh, so to speak that, uh, to, to sign off on the uh, PPA um, what what emergency declaration is currently in effect which one is the is it the one issued in July uh, the emergency declarations um, they haven't been renewed absolutely verbatim I know we've done some uh, some modifications of the language almost every single month the one I have in front of me is the I guess we'll say the renewal uh, signed off by uh, the lieutenant governor acting governor at the, at the time is, is that okay. if it's if it says he signed here in his acting capacity then okay. I'm sure that was okay. in his acting capacity at the time um, and are, are, are you aware of whether any of the, the reasons for, for the emergency declaration uh, being issued, uh, being addressed by the administration? Whereas I find that COC is facing a continuing gas shortage, one, uh, which threatens to, to hold power, water, wastewater services. Uh, and then two, in addition, I find that in order to give relief to customers, renewable energy projects must be implemented. Uh, number three, uh, I also find that in order to continue operations, COC must be able to retain specialized technical employees who are not U.S. citizens. Uh, and I guess three is that until such time that a board is, is constituted, the uh, executive power the, or the governor takes over the, the uh, boards. So out of those, what, three or four, uh, do you know whether any of these 
reasons or justifications for the declaration been addressed? Let's go with with number one, cash shortage. At CUC, has that particular justification been addressed? Well, I know at CUC, um, I believe that part we have to deal in with. Uh, we had like CUC was not being able to get the cash to help for, pay for their gas, and then like uh, payments from this government, you know, my government to CUC were not always full or untimely and the PSS wasn't paying and the CHC wasn't paying. Um, that was supposed to help with that regard and facilitate any um, payments or maybe identify funds in some way. I know that uh, has emergency declaration necessarily led to like a mitigation of that. Um, off the top of my head, I can't can't tell you that. I couldn't tell you that. You can't? What, what's your answer, yes or no? Uh, I just, I don't know. I, okay, that's, that's fair enough. Uh, the number two on the renewable projects implementation, has, has this been addressed? I know we've been say uh, I know CUC and the administration has been moving forward on renewable energy contracts uh, I believe they've there's a solar park project that's um, supposed to be close to signing uh, the third one they need for specialized technical employees who are not US citizens I know that this legislature has, has uh, accommodated the governor and, and that came from CUC in regards to the higher or the continuing employment of, of non-U.S. citizens. Uh, I don't know whether the emergency declaration was necessary to, to do that. Uh, and, and the fourth there is, is, is the board being constituted and, uh, and everybody knows what's the status of that. We haven't seen any. Uh, so, but I don't see the, the, the the number five here, the, the need for a new power plant. Uh, and you know, the in, in, in the top of, of the page, uh, imminent failure and the need to provide immediate. And that's why I, I asked whether any of these have been addressed. Because uh, the word emergency and, and, and you put it together with immediate, are very self-explanatory that, that that because of this we must act immediately and and I don't know what's the next person in uh, definition or interpretation of the, the words emergency and immediate and that's why I ask that I think the uh, initial executive order was issued back in May now it's in October and and if the emergency crisis uh, are the grounds for the issuance of, of the emergency declaration, which is now being used as, as the, the, the source of authority for, for the governor and the agent to sign off on this sole source uh, PPA. Uh, if, if none of the so-called emergencies have been addressed, other than the power purchase agreement, which is not specifically addressed in the declaration, I, I, I find something wrong with with the overall picture here. That the ones that that, that the the one issue, the one critical issue here, is that that is not addressed in the emergency declaration is the only one that that, that has been signed off or or has, has been addressed. Um, Chairman, I you want, want to respond now? Okay. Uh, okay. We stated earlier, I believe it was a position of the administration that um, when CDC went into an emergency, that the emergency powers 
either expressly or impliedly, the governor had the authority to enter into the contract. And, and, and the, grounds, the grounds provided, or the justifications provided for the emergency declaration uh, shall not be a condition on, on what the governor is shall be able to do under the, the validity of the declaration. Uh, I don't believe they have, where it's our position, they don't have to be directly tied. That the mere fact that the CUC is under the state of declaration of emergency that I believe the governor had, well, we believe that the governor had um, the authority to enter into that agreement. So, so the governor can use, can issue an emergency declaration and says, this is why we're going to do this, but in the meantime, I'm not going to address it and, and uh, do something else that's not the, the grounds for the, the emergency declaration. There, there, is there any limitation? I mean, why, if, if there's no limitation, why is the reason for the emergency declaration provided for the declaration itself? If that's not going to be the, 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 the framework of, of, of what can and cannot be done. I believe, well, honestly, it is our position, you know, the administration's position, the position of the Attorney General's office, that yes, there are limits. Um, I don't want to go into that now, but I, we do not believe that, they, that this situation has uh, gone over that limit. Can you uh, wrap it up? Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Bermitz, uh Chairman, I, I you. Thank you. Um, we are going to break for lunch and resume our hearing at 3, relevant to Articles 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7, I believe. Um, Mr. Bembridge, I want to thank you for your cooperation. Uh, Vice Speaker? Just before we uh, all break for lunch, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to ask that uh, if we could call Mr. Fletcher back uh, uh, to uh, provide some testimony on the, some more testimony on the power plan. Thank uh, you, Vice. I just want, before uh, we end, I just want to make sure that I hear correctly that the governor has the authority to uh, enter into the uh, uh, sole source contract with uh, Saipan Development LLC uh, under the emergency declaration from uh, Mr. Berkbrick. Uh, Am I hearing that? That he has the authority, the power to enter uh, into that contract uh, yeah. because of that emergency declaration? That's the position of administration of the Attorney General's office. Thank you. Uh, Vice, we will contact Mr. Fletcher and uh, schedule him for a... Uh, I think we've already uh, informed Mr. Fletcher that uh, he will be coming back to uh, answer more questions with this body. Okay, with that, Mr. Mr. Bernberg, let me just clarify, though, just to rehash very quickly the points that uh, we understood from the testimony today. <clears throat> the first one was that um, the CNMI did not get a guarantee for the 10% reduction. Yes or no? I think you answered this yeah, already, Mr. Bernberg. There is no 10% guaranteed reduction. Thank you. Uh, second, is there a guarantee for a shipyard? Yes or no? There is no contractual guarantee in that agreement for a shipyard. Thank you. Third is <clears throat> that your office, your staff, uh, did review the contract um, not all of the recommendations were addressed and 
you answered it by saying that uh, policy decisions were made uh, after your recommendations. So because of that, not all of the concerns were addressed. Is that a fair statement? You, you raised specific concerns. You and your attorney generals raised some. You presented it. You stated this several times. You presented it up to Mr. Buckingham. Um, some were addressed. Not all of them were. Is that? I would say all of them were addressed in some form or another. Um, whether they, you know, we got them or how hard they were pressed or if we had to um, compromise on them. Um, that's, I would, I just want to say they were all addressed to some degree. To some degree. Okay, yes. fair enough, fair enough. And the last, which was what you have just clarified to the vice speaker, was that um, in, in your opinion, um, the emergency declaration does not necessarily have to be tied into the actions of the, the governor to do a source source contract. Oh. Sure. That, that was my question. Uh, yes or no? Yes, that's the opinion of our office. Thank you. Sorry, I did not understand the chair. Just for me to be perfectly clear on the question that was just asked, because the question that I asked Mr. Burnbrick was whether the governor has the power to enter into the sole source contract with Saipan Development LLC uh, under the emergency declaration. Is it our position? that he had the power under the emergency I think that's, that was my question. Yes. Thank you, Vice. I'm sorry. Just to clarify, this was a question that Representative Sablan raised before you came in, and that's what I was trying to clarify. Um, and also further that um, you would provide this committee with the uh, requested information that was asked uh, of your office. Um, uh, we will probably reschedule a probably, meaning it's not a sure thing yet, whether the committee would ask you to return and answer further questions. Of course, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and with that, we appreciate you uh, coming and cooperating and answering the questions. With that, this committee would now break for lunch and return at 3 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Burnbridge. Thank you, Mr. Carney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Recess. Until three.